Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday. You get back to my comments here. So hopefully you'll be able to hear me okay. Second, I'm getting my comments up here. Is everybody getting ready for Thanksgiving? Oh, I got a couple people coming in. All right, just a second here. Let me get the banner turned off. I always have to click all these buttons when we get started. Hi, Marianne. Wait a few minutes for people to get in. Hi, Jan. It's kind of a windy, blustery day today. My goodness. I was I was so surprised at how hard the wind's blowing. I'm not very, uh, I haven't been too ambitious. Well, I have been ambitious, I guess, but not too, too terribly ambitious today. <laughs> it was a nice day for staying in. It's been kind of cold and windy and hi Jackie got a few people coming in I think people are busy this weekend I had a bunch of people tell me they weren't going to be able to be here tonight because they're they've all started Thanksgiving already <laughs> so we're having Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving so there's just two of us so it makes it really easy you watch football all afternoon. Well, you know, I don't watch TV much. Um, I actually was watching. I was just working all afternoon. So hy is cooking for you. Oh, that's awesome. I'm actually going to cook, Marianne. I'm pretty proud of myself. How did you ever get that desk up there? Oh, you mean my table? My table? Um, I got my table up here. My friends, um, Kathy and Orland Brunson from Manamosa here came up and helped me get, they have a truck. So they helped me get it up here. <laughs> it, it was, it's heavy and it's big. So, yep. And you are not cooking. <laughs> well, I'm going to have, um, I'm going to make chicken and rice. Thank you. I'll be fine. Hi, Cindy. So I have been working today. So what I did this morning is I got up and I had made this a, a week or so ago. I think I put a picture of it. So this is going to be the bench buddies. This is the January ones. And so this one I'm going to be um, videoing and uploading the day after Christmas. So this is the little rectangle one. There's snow place like home. I thought he was so cute. So we'll do that one. Um, I'll do this one and make a video and um, put it up like the day after Christmas. Okay. Christmas is on Saturday this year. So um, the day after Christmas, I'll put this up. And then today I made the square one. So this is the square one. And this one was really fun. So I got this one done. Um, and this one I will, up, I'm, I'm going to make a video and I'll upload this then the day after New Year's. So you'll have a couple of classes um, for the end of December and early January because I'm going to take a month off. So I'm going to do um, I'm going to teach through the 12th of December and then we'll have four weeks off. But I'll have two videos to upload for you for these little bench buddies for January, because I figured uh, one of the gals um, asked if we could do the bench buddies like the month before we need them. So we're going to do the January ones in the end of December and 1st of January. And then, and then we're going to do the um, February ones at the end of January. So, so that's what we're going to do. So this is the one I did today. It was really fun. I thought it turned out really cute. I love that. Can you see that the little um, penguin has little uh, fringe earmuffs? I thought he was cute. So, and I even got my scanning cut. I brought my scanning cut up. So I, I did some uh, cutting on my scanning cut with the glitter vinyl and I cut out these little letters up here. So, oops, over here. There we go. Over there. So, yeah, so it was fun. So, these are going to be um, coming up in at the end of December and the first part of January. So, um, but I'm going to do these as pre recorded videos for you, and then we'll do the rest of them live. Okay. All right. And a lot of you last week asked um, if you could. Uh, hi, Denise. Hi, Marilyn. Um, a lot of you asked if you could see Judy's um, blue quilt. So I brought it home from the store. So I'm going to go ahead and hold it up here. So Judy made 
um, May Your Days Be Merry and Bright, but she used blues. And none of her fabric is like Christmas fabric or anything. It's just different kinds of blues. So she had almost all different fabrics. So hopefully you can see it. I'm going to get the chair out of the way here. I'll hold it up so you can see. And then I'll hold it a little closer to the camera. But this is the blue one. And you can see she had almost all different fabrics, you know, for the border. And then she's got another blue on the back with some flowers. So none of this was Christmas fabric. This was all just, just um, you know, it looks Christmassy because, you know, it's got Christmas designs on it, but it's all flowers and um, mostly flowers. I think she got it from Gudron Erla um, from GE Designs. I think that's where this came from. So she, a lot of people, and then she quilted the whole thing. I don't know if you can see it very well, but she quilted the whole thing in silver metallic. So she did the whole thing in silver metallic. And then on hers, she did like a decorative stitch down the middle of her border, her inside border, instead of doing um, serpentine or something like that. So you could kind of do anything you want. We're going to talk about that tonight. But anyway, I wanted you to see, I, I'm sorry, you can't see the whole thing on the camera, but if I hold it up and kind of move it around, I think you'll be able to see most of it. So this is the blue quilt. And then Lynn's was grays and blacks and red. So it was really pretty, but isn't that cute? I really liked I really liked the blue. So anyway, so this is Judy's quilt. This one's hanging in the Iowa City store. And Lynn's quilt, which is the grays, the blacks, and the red, is hanging in the Davenport store. So if you're down there, go in and take a look at Lynn's quilt, okay? So I'll put this back over here. But I brought that home so everybody could see it. But the little pillows have been really fun. So that's what I worked on today is the second pillow. And now I, I'm ready to do the videos because I know what I'm doing. You know, sometimes you have to know what you're doing before you, you make the videos, you know. So, okay. So tonight we're going to work on um, quilting. And I, I did start quilting the quilt. I haven't quilted very much. And we'll talk about the different kinds of quilting a little bit. Um, when you buy the quilt pattern, there are quite detailed videos on the quilting itself. So I'm going to kind of touch on both methods of quilting. Uh, yes, I can, Pat. I'll try to get a good picture of it. It's very hard here to get um, to get a picture of anything. <laughs> so I'll try. I'll try to put a picture of it up there. Yes. And otherwise, I'll wait till I take it down to the store um, on Tuesday and I will take a picture with it hanging on the wall. It might be easier down there because I don't have any place to hang it here. So um, but then then you'd be able to see a little bit closer up and the, maybe the whole thing at the same time. So, um, yeah, I really like I really thought it was pretty. I thought um, Judy did a very good job. So and um, she, I, I have to give Judy a lot of credit. She didn't have any instructions because she was making the quilt by me telling her how to do it <laughs> with no instructions. I was writing the instructions while she was making that. So she did quite well with only having me tell her what to do. <laughs> and she didn't have anything written out. So I think she would have appreciated some instructions, but uh, it worked out okay. She got it done. So it turned out really well. So, okay. So let me switch my camera here and we're going to talk about, um, first, the first thing we're gonna do is talk about the templates, okay? So let me get my camera switched over here. And I always have to find the right one. There we go. Get the right microphone. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me. Still hearing me all right? Hi, Kathy. Okay, so hopefully you can still hear me okay. I just switched over to the other microphone too, so. Oh, I'm getting thumbs up, so I must be being heard. Okay, so um, in the pack that you buy when you get the, the, the this, you get May Your Days Be Merry and Bright, there are PDF files that are templates. And how I'm going to use these templates is for the quilting. Um, I made a template for each um, in quilting design. Okay, so this is one of the quilting designs. And I made a template for each one of the, um, these are the, the red work block ones. And then each for each one of like the, um, the feather wreaths and the feathers and all that, okay? 
And the reason I use templates is because I don't, I started by marking my blocks first with a marking pen, but I had a little trouble getting the marks off. And so with the, with the, the templates, you don't have to worry about that because you just have the template. It has all of the, the markings on it for you. And you don't have to worry about getting that pen off. Um, Cause you know, sometime of those, sometime of those, some of those pens do not come off very well. Um, so I was struggling with that. So I went to templates. So what I did is you have a PDF file and you're going to want to print these off. Um, what I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I have mine printed on. And this is the best option for these is to use a target paper. Print and stick target paper is the dime version. Hi, Clara. And um, the other version, the Floriani version is called Tacky, um, Tacky, let's see, it's uh, something, it's it's like print and stick, but it's um, Tacky Tearaway. T tacky Tearaway, I think is what they call it. I don't know, I, I don't remember exactly, but it's it's this stuff that you can use for templates. And I have the print and stick target paper in the store right now. So I would probably recommend um, purchasing this because you can then print your templates out, one on each page. This is just a piece of paper. You can use a piece of paper. When I put this on the quilt, you'll understand why I like the target paper because the target paper is translucent. And so you can see the stitching underneath but through the template when you can't as well through the paper. You can, but not very well, okay? So the paper does work if you don't have anything else but paper, but I really like the template tearaway because then I can see better what I'm doing. What I did then is I made this, this artwork box that's gonna print on all your PDFs. That is where you're gonna cut out your template around that square. That is the exact size of the block. So it makes it really easy to get these placed correctly because it fits right inside your block, okay? And if you look here, I don't know if you can see it here, can you see the little arrows? Those little arrows point up. So that's the up, the, the top of the, the template. So even if you, when you cut this off, you're still gonna have a little arrow pointing up. So you know which one um, where, you know, where the top is. Okay. Also, the other thing you need to make sure in that PDF, when you open up the PDF file, make sure that you print your templates at full size at actual, it says actual size. Don't do to fit because it might be a little bit too big. Okay. So use actual size when you're printing. And that's important because you want the templates to be the right size. Okay. So I have all of my templates printed out on print and stick target paper, okay? And I will show you how to, how to put these on the quilt here in a minute. Um, and we're gonna do a couple different kinds of quilting. So I'm gonna lay this over. Anybody have any questions about the templates and what you need to do with those? I, I found this worked better for me um, because I'm gonna show you two methods. I'm gonna show you the the traditional method, which which is you know using a grid in your hoop and, and using this to help you line it up. Or I'm gonna show you how to use, um, a second here, I gotta turn my fan on, I'm too hot. It gets warm back in this corner. But I gotta get my fan so it won't fall off on the floor. Okay. Um, or I'm gonna show you my, my favorite, um, my favorite, way of doing this is with a snowman. So most, a lot of you have a sewing, have a an embroidery machine that has the snowman feature, auto centering feature. This, this has been in the machines for a very long time. So all the way back to the quattros. So if you, if you have an older machine, you still may have this, um, this snowman feature and I love it. And it works wonderfully for this. And it's so much faster than having to rehoop every single, um, block if you don't have any other option it works fine and i am going to do a block that way so you can see that it works just fine um, but it does take a little bit longer because you have to take the the quilt out of the machine in order to hoop it and if, if you quilt with the snowman and the template um, i just i use my magnetic hoops so we're going to use two different kinds of hoops tonight too okay 
And these are all in the videos and it's much more detailed than what I'll go into tonight. Okay, so on page six of your instructions, there is a very nice roadmap here of where all of the quilting designs go. So each one of the red work blocks have their own quilting design that goes around them. Okay, and then it shows you where to put your, your feather wreaths and the feathers. Okay, and how I did those was, you know, when you had a six patch, there's a feather and a feather wreath in those. And on the top part of the quilt, I had the wreath, feather wreath on the top and the feather on the bottom. And on the bottom part of the quilt, I have the, the feather on the top and the wreath on the bottom. So that way there's no wreath and no feather right next to each other. Okay, so I gave you this little roadmap to help you out. Okay, so we're going to talk about the center of the quilt first. And then I'm going to talk you through the borders. I don't have um, my quilt quilted enough to, in order to do a border for you tonight. But I think um, it, with the video that I did in the actual pack, there's a very detailed video on the border. Okay. All right. So that's page six is our little, our little roadmap. And a lot of the stuff that I talked about when it comes to printing out your PDF files and, and oh, and the other thing, label them because you're going to cut off the name. So I just took a pen and said, this is the one for the stocking. Label it down inside there so you know which one it is. You can kind of tell, but, you know, they're just stippling around there. So it's a little hard to see. All right. So make sure that you um, that you label them so you know which ones they are. And then you can use these multiple times. Like these, these are the ones I printed out for my first quilt. So I'm still using these for for um, my fourth. This is my fourth quilt. Um, there's a couple of them I've had to reprint because they kind of lose their sticky after a while, like the border one, because you use it quite a few times. So I have had to reprint a few. Um, be careful that you get your, your templates at their full size. Cut them out around the, the rectangle or the square. In this case, it was a square. Okay. All right. So we, we I called these... The, the two quilting options, the traditional method or the snowman method. So we're going to talk about the traditional method first, because some lot of you have a, one of the smaller machines that doesn't have like the snowman on it. Um, and that's and this works just perfectly fine that way. I have quilted many things and I have so, uh, centered many things with traditional hoops for, for many years. So it's not hard. So what you're going to need, so I quilted my quilt blocks that I did traditionally with a six by six hoop because the, the um, quilting pattern will fit in a six by six. I love this little six by six hoop. And then you will also need the plastic grid. So if you've never used a plastic grid before, now you're going to know how to use it. Okay. So let me lay these aside for a second. Now I am going to actually have to hoop this over on the table because I cannot get it hooped on the machine. I just don't have enough room. So I'll have to talk you through that as I'm hooping right behind me. But I am going to bring the quilt over here. Let me get my pillows out of the way. Okay, I'm going to bring the quilt over here. And we're going to, I'm going to show you how to put the templates on. All right, so let me bring this up here, set it under here so you can see. I'm going to do this Christmas stocking, which we're going to quilt the Christmas stocking here. Okay, so I'll lay this up here so you can see it. And um, as you notice, too, oops, got to get it right side up. First of all, you want to find the little arrow, so it's right side up. Okay. There, there, I was going to say my arm decided it was going to hum at me. Um, I'm going to remove this from the backing. When these are new, they are a little on the sticky side. So what I did with mine is I laid them against my clothes so they got a little cat hair on them. Otherwise, they're so sticky. So um, that that's just a little hint if you have a little trouble with them being sticky. Now, these blocks here, of course, have a center block and so that's going to help me get these lined up this is the top so this is the stocking i'm going to take this and i'm going to line this up in my in my um, block here when you cut it out you're going to cut it out and it's basically going to be the same size as your block might be just a little bit 
bigger or smaller. I have a little trouble with my blocks and sometimes mine aren't exactly perfect. So, so I'm just going to lay this in here. And what's cool about this template material, I'm going to try to get this lined up here. I can see my stitching underneath. So see how well you can see it's very quite translucent and you can see it. So what I'm doing is I'm also using my center of my blocks here to help me line this up. Okay, so I've got this in there. It looks pretty straight to me. And you can see that the quilting part goes nicely around my stocking. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. Get this out of the way here. I'm going to need my templates here. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our hoop and I am going to, I'm going to show you here and then I'm going to go do this on my table because I, it's so big and heavy. I can't keep it from moving on me. But when you, when you hoop using a traditional hoop, make sure that you use, um, and this, like I said, the six by six hoop is perfect for this. It, it's not real big and it's easy to ma manipulate. But the trick with standard hoops when you're hooping a quilt in it, you know, it's a little bulky. Make sure that you have the base of your hoop opened up so that it's fairly loose. I mean, like really loose because then things will go in easier. Okay, that's the whole trick right there. And I forgot to get one thing out of my drawer here. So give me a second here. And then the other thing on the back of my hoop I have this double-sided sticky tape. This is the Clover tape, um, double-sided. It's up on the website. It's the double-sided Clover tape. Um, and I put this on my the back of my hoop. And this is the loop part that goes inside. I put this on the back of the hoop. And this will help me then get the base part in so that it will kind of hold it so it won't it won't um, move around on me. So I'm going to use a little bit of that and I'm going to take the paper off of it. I got the paper off one side to see if I can get this one off. I have a hard time with this stuff. Let's see if I can get it off. There we go. I like this clover tape because it's a little wider and it's also stickier than the um, water soluble stuff that we've used with some of the other quilts. Um, what's it called? Well, it used to be Collins to um, wash away wonder tape, but it's now just it's drips. OK, so now I've got a couple sticky spots on here. This will help me hold my my um, hoop in place in order for to get it hooped. Then what I'm going to do. This out of our way. I'm going to turn this over. This is the center. So here's the center marks on this template. This is going to help me. I'm going to turn this right side up and I'm going to make sure that my hoop grid you can read it and it says ABC and you know like here's the left side of the hoop it looks like the hoop right here okay you're going to lay this in the hoop with the little there's like little you know little slots that it sits in okay and then what I'm going to do the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this under here I'm going to line this up the best I can right on the lines of my template okay Make sure i don't and i'm going to go do this for real over over at the table okay and then i'm going to stick this hoop down and that will ho help hold it in place for me so it doesn't scoot around while i'm trying to move the the base in okay so if i back this up a little bit because I what I did in the videos that you get with the design with the designs is I actually did this with two cameras. I moved the camera so you could actually watch me doing this part. Okay. So then once this is stuck down and it's not going anywhere, then I take this part and I slide it under and drop it down into the hoop and tighten it up. Okay. And that is in the video, but I, it's just too hard to do it here. So I'm going to slide this up. Okay. I'll, then I'll slide this underneath here. I'm kind of try to give you a simulation if I can. <laughs> it's not, not enough room underneath here. So, okay. I'm going to slide this up. And again, I have that fairly loose. And then I slide it around with my fingers until I get it right where I want it. And then I just push down and tighten. 
okay? So it is not hard to get these hooped, but you do need to have your lower part of your hoop very loose, okay? So I'm gonna go over and do this at the table. I'll kind of walk, I'll talk you through as I'm doing it. I am gonna have to take these pins out over here. So give me a second, I'm gonna drop, bring this over on my table and lay it flat. And it's really important to have it flat because then it th then it doesn't move around on you. So hopefully you can still kind of hear me. I'm gonna uh, take a couple more pins out so that they won't be in my way. There was a couple of those pins that were you know in the way of the hoop, so I'm gonna take those out real quick. All right. And I'm taking my grid and I've got it in my hoop. And I'm lining it up with my template. And I'm going to stick that loop down now to my top because it's it'll stick with that tape on it. And that really makes a difference using that tape. And like I said, I show all of this on the video um, that you get with the designs. Okay, now I'm going to take my hoop, and as you can see, I have that screw pretty loose. Let me just see, I've got it pretty loose. Okay, I'm going to take this, I'm sliding it under the hoop, the under the quilt. And then I use my fingers to move it to the position it needs to be. And I can feel the edges of the hoop with my thumbs. And I can scoot it in until it drops. I mean, the, the hoop will just literally drop right in when you get it positioned. I'm not quite there yet. I'm getting close. Oops, a little high yet. Okay, got it in. Looks like I'm pretty close. Just checking it out, looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm gonna tighten up that screw. And it does need to be pretty snug. That's why I like to use, just so you know, that's why I like to use these smaller hoops because they tighten better. And they're not as, they don't pop open as easy. Okay, so I would highly suggest using a smaller hoop. You don't need a very big one to do these blocks. Or maybe an eight by eight, that would work too. Okay. Okay, I think I've got it. So I'm going to bring this back over to the camera now. I'm just pushing down the corners to make sure they're in there. Okay. So I'm going to slide this under the needle and I'll bring it up so you can see the hoop now. Just a second to get it in there. Okay. I'm going to slide it into the machine. All right. So can everybody see the hoop with the grid still on it? Okay. Now, there's the, the one thing about this is that the grid and where those little things are is not the true center of the hoop. So when I go to put this in and bring the design up, so I'm going to go get my quilting design for the stocking, it probably is not going to be in the center. So we can fix that. Okay. So let's go down here. I'm going to go down and get my design, and this is the stocking. These are going to be in the Redwork Quilting um, folder. And we're doing the stocking. So it's going to be down here under stocking quilting. That's where the PDF file is also, just so you know. And then, so here's my PES file. So I'm going to grab that file and I'm going to hit set. And I'm going to hit embroidery. Okay. Now, it is pretty close, but if you look closely here, I don't know if you can see it. My needle is slightly to the left of that center mark. 
Well, I want to make sure that I'm in exactly the center. Okay, so most of the machines, even the, the smaller ones like the 3500Ds, the 3600Ds, the 5200s, all of them have the ability to have a laser light. And the laser light is awesome. If you do not have a laser light for it, you can get one. Um, or you can still use the old plain old method of dropping the needle. But I'm looking here at my design and I can see that my needle is to the left of the center. So I am going to move this. So I'm gonna push this over. I'm gonna hit layout on my machine. I'm gonna hit move. And I wanna move it. I'm just gonna hit the little bump keys. I'm gonna move it over to the right. And that looks pretty good. So it's closer. So now I'm gonna turn the laser light on. So for those of you who don't have a laser light on your machine, or if you have, it didn't come with one, you can get one, 3600s, 3500s, 37s, the 52s, all of them can have a laser light. 6200Ds, all of them can have a laser light. Uh, the Dreams have them, the Quattro had one if you had the fourth upgrade. So you've all the way back to the Quattro. There's a little, usually somewhere there's a little, um, button that looks like the W foot. And if you touch that, the laser light's going to turn on. Okay. So mine, of course, is part of the camera. So you're, you're not going to be able to see it too well. But I can see that the little dot here is right on top of my center. It could go over one more little bump to the right. Okay. And that looks pretty close. Now the other option then is to drop the needle. If you don't have the laser light, you can always Take the thread out of the needle, drop your needle down, and make sure that it's going through the center of your template. You should, if you used your grid, you should for sh pretty be pretty certain that it's straight in the hoop, okay? All right, so I'm just going to raise my needle. Now, I, I will tell you I am using metallic thread in the needle and in the bobbin. This is the, the King Star Metallic. You cannot use any other metallic thread in the, in the bobbin. This is the only one I've ever been able to use in the bobbin. But as you just saw, my machine does not always like to thread it. <laughs> so I do have to thread my hand, hand thread my needle with some of the colors, not all, but the silver, it does not like to cut. It does not like to thread. So I am going to have to thread this by hand. I'm sorry. And it does thread some of them. It just doesn't like this one. And I am using a pretty small needle. I use a number 11 embroidery needle. So um, you could, if you went up to a 12 or a 14, it probably would thread it, okay? So we have traditionally hooped this. We've got it centered with the laser light and, and or the needle placement, okay? I always used to use the needle. That's what I always used, okay? I know it's gonna go right down in the center of my template where I want it. I am happy with this. So what I'm gonna do now is remove and don't forget, remove the templates before you try to sew, because otherwise you'd be very upset. <laughs> it's very hard to get them out <laughs> of the stitching. Okay, so I think I'm pretty happy with that. I've got my silver metallic um, in the needle and in the bobbin, and it is the King Star Silver Metallic. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. Now, let's talk a little bit. I'm going to find something to put this on so it won't stick on everything. If they, if you stick the backs of these together, oh my gosh, they're so hard to get apart. Okay, get this out of the way. All right. If you are sewing on a machine that is raised up from your table, mine is flatbed. Um, you have to hold your, make sure you're holding your quilt up. I still hold my quilt up in the front. I've got it in my arm. Um, even though I have a flat bed in the back, but see, I don't have to worry about my back because my table is holding it. If you are, do not have a table like that, though, you're going to have to to watch the back so that it's not dragging off the back. You know, put another table behind you so that it can lay on that so it doesn't drag down. Okay, it's much easier to quilt if you have a flatbed machine or a flatbed cabinet like these um, unique ones because they're so much better. So now I'm ready to quilt. I'm going to go ahead and hit start, and it's going to quilt this block. I left you a little bit of wiggle room all the way around. So I, I pulled in the quilting a little bit from the edges 
so that if you get just a little bit off, you're going to be fine. I gave you about a quarter of an inch all the way around, so you don't have to worry about hitting the edges or going over into the next block or anything. So as you can see, this can easily be done without a snowman, without all the fancy cameras. You don't even need the, you don't need the, um, even the laser light. The laser light is really nice. And if you have the option with your machine, I'd highly recommend it because it comes in extremely handy. So it's just doing its little quilting. And there's one of these for every single block. So you got 13 of these. And just work your way around. So we talked a little bit about, um, I think I've done this in the past, but let's talk a little bit again while this is stitching about how you quilt. So generally you want to start kind of in the center of the quilt and work towards the outsides. I started this afternoon and I'll show you here when this is done. So there's my quilt. There it is. See, I, I, I hooped that traditionally. It looks perfect and it's straight and it's done. Okay. So there's another block done. And I did that in a traditional hoop. Okay. Um, so when I started this quilt this afternoon, I started in the center. So I did the Mary, May Your Days Be Merry and Bright, Bright block. That's the one I wanted in the center. So I made that. I did that one first. And then I kind of went from that to Judy said this is how she did hers. Kind of did, you know, like it by rows. So I started in the center and then I kind of worked this way and then I worked this way. Now, I then I went up from the center and did a couple of blocks over here. So I did like this feather here and this feather wreath here. And now I'm going to work this direction and this direction. So I was working this way with this one. And then I think we'll work, I'm going to go this way right now because I'm going to show you another way of using the, um, the template with the snowman. Okay. So here is our little, our little stocking block. It's all beautiful. So I'll quilt it. So I'm going to pull this, I'm going to pull this hoop out of here. And then I'm going to show you how I'm going to do the ones, the, the, I like to use the um, magnetic hoops when I hoop um, with the snowman. Because when, if you're using the template, you really have to use a traditional hoop. Okay, so now let's go over here and let's do another one. Let's do this candy cane. So I already have the, the template on this one. You see, I've got the candy cane template on here already. And on this one, I'm going to use a square hoop. Um, I have one of my dime magnetic hoops. I kind of like, they, they have an eight by eight and then there's a nine by nine. My machine's a little bit bigger. The eight by eight works fine. It doesn't clamp quite as tight as this nine by nine. So I usually use the nine by nine when I'm doing square stuff, just because I have a little more wiggle room also. Okay. So now what I have done is I have put the base into the machine. Okay, so I'm going to put, this is how I do all my quilting with this. So we're going to do the rest of the quilting with this hoop. And it is, I put the base in the machine and I don't take it out. And I also do not remove the quilt from the hoop or from the machine. All right. So now, of course, we need to get this hooped. I'm going to turn this a little bit. I just need to fold it in a little bit. And what my, the trick that I use is I like to try to put the needle right on top of the center marking approximately in the hoop. But this is going to be the thing that actually lines it up for me. So I'm going to, again, this is the top right here. And I'm going to put my little snowman right on that center mark with the little head of the snowman up because that's the top. I'm going to get it right in there and stick that to, right to the template. Okay, and I take these on and off the templates. I don't leave them on every one. I just take them on and off. Okay, then I I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to kind of get my quilt in here so that the needle is approximately in the center of the block, more or less. Now I am going to take some more pins out here. Ugh, there we go. All right, oops, looks like I might need a couple more up here. You don't want any, when you're using the magnetic hoops, you do not want any pins under the hoop because then they slide. So make sure you don't have any pins. And sometimes I got to put them back in, but you don't want any pins under the edges of your hoops. Okay. All right. So then I've got it about centered. 
And then also these hoops have these, these two little divots. Okay, that is the right side of the hoop. So make sure those are on the right outside. Otherwise, the hoop will not stick properly. Okay, so let's get this kind of centered. It's not perfectly centered. And if it's not perfectly straight, it doesn't matter. Because remember, the snowman's going to help us out here. And I like to pull the quilt so that it's snug in there. It's not doesn't have to be like snapping, you know, like drum tight. But I like it to be snug in there. And I'm also, can you see that what I'm doing with my fingers? I'm going around my hoop, making sure that all of the edges of my hoop are very lined up. Because if they're not, the hoop's going to slide on me. Okay. That looks pretty good. All right. I'm going to go grab my candy cane. Whoops, I may actually have to move this over. Because that one's stopped in a weird place. So let me go get my candy cane. We may have to do this and pull it over a little bit. Candy cane quilting. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to pull it over. See, it's it's really off center now. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this up and I'm going to pull this over like that. There we go. It's much closer now. It doesn't have to be exact. Just kind of get it close because then you know it's going to fit in the hoop well and everything. And if it's not straight, it doesn't matter. I had one that was really crooked this afternoon, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure my hoop's all lined up. Don't have any pins underneath there. Okay. Is everybody still hearing me okay? You guys are quiet. Are you watching me carefully? <laughs> Everybody's very quiet tonight. Okay. So, now there's my snowman. Okay. To make the snowman work, it is so simple. I don't want anybody after this, after you quilt this quilt, believe me, you will know exactly how your snowman works. It's so easy. Okay. All you do now, I have a luminaire. So mine says layout. The other ones say edit here. Okay. So you click that button and you look for the little snowman guy. There he is. Okay. Okay. To revert to the original position. Yep. That's fine. Hit. Okay. This little screen comes up. And there's a button that says scan at the bottom. I don't know if you can see, quite see it. Scan. So I'm going to hit scan. And OK. And the machine is going to go find the snowman and center my design for me. That is all there is to using the snowman. Isn't it easy? Super easy. So it's going to go find the snowman. OK, so here's what it's doing up on the screen. It's still oh, he found him. There he is. He found him. Now it's going to center him up. It must be a little crooked, so it's going to kind of. Yeah, so see how it's kind of kind of tipped a little bit. So it, it found him and, it, and it's lined right up on my snowman sticker. Can you see over here? The needle is going to drop right down on that little polka dot right there. Okay. It says remove the embroidery positioning mark. Okay. So we're going to take our template off. This is the way to do this. If you have the snowman, do it this way because it really works well. Okay. So we're going to got our little our little candy cane over here. Turn this around and we're going to quilt the candy cane. Still got my silver metallic in the needle in the bobbin. And this is, again, King Star Metallic. You cannot use any other metallic in your, in your needle. I've tried. It does not work. Okay, so here we're going to do our candy canes. And when I digitized these, originally I had digitized them, and I'll show you the difference. I had digitized them with that they were quite close to the edges, and I was afraid that people using standard templates would find it difficult to get it lined up without going over into their blocks. And I'll show you my original quilt. So when I redid this, I I changed the stippling a little bit so that it um, gives you a little bit of wiggle room on the edges. So when you're using templates especially, you have a little more wiggle room. And I'm just holding up my quilt. It's going around the... And you can do any colors you want if you want your stippling to show. 
use a darker color. I like my stippling to kind of blend in, so I used silver metallic just so that it did show just a little. On my original one, I used white, and so it really doesn't show at all, but um, whatever you like to do. I kind of like my quilting to not really super stand out. All right, so there's, there's the candy canes. Done. Okay. So as you can see, there's just a little rim around the outside edge. Just give you a little wiggle room in case, you know, you have a little problem getting it in there straight. Okay. Let me grab my other quilt here, my original one, and I'll show you what I meant with the stiff one. Because normally when I stipple, I like it to be a little closer to the edge. But I was worried that people would have trouble lining these up. So if you, if you can see this one, I made the stipples a lot smaller here too. And I did them a little bit bigger just so that they weren't quite so small and so close together. Do you know the cost of those tables? Oh, these tables, um, they vary, Jan, depending on the size. So um, the, there's a four foot, a 52 inch, a 48, a 52, and a 65. This is a 65 inch cabinet. But can you see that these are a lot, quite a lot closer to the edges? And if you were a little off, you might have gone over into your borders and stuff. So I, I wanted to give everybody just a little bit of wiggle room. So I redid the stippling to make it a little bit easier. I have a camera and a projector. So I, it's a little easier for me to get these lined up. But um, if you're using templates, it works a lot better this way. Okay, just to get, have a little more wiggle room around the edge. Okay? All right. So are there any questions about the red work design? So we're going to do a couple more of the designs too. We're going to do some of the um, feathers and stuff. So each one of the red work designs has its own template. And I just have them marked here. Okay, so make sure that you mark them and then I you can put them back on the little backing fabric wherever my second piece went. Second here. I like to put them back on my little backing fabric or pa the paper so I can use it again later. Because I have to make a fifth quilt. <laughs> then I'll have all the templates already printed out. Okay, and I'm going to take the snowman off. We'll need to use that again in a little bit. Okay. Are there any other questions about those? I go I, I go into a lot of detail in the the videos that I pre-recorded. Do we carry the nine by nine magnetic hoop? Yes, we do. I have it in stock. Yes, I have it in stock. I have a nine by nine, a ten. I don't think I have a ten by ten, but I have the nine by nine and the eight by eight in stock. So yes, I love this hoop. This is one I use quite a bit. So it's just a little stronger than the eight by eight. So, okay, so um, let's continue on here. Let's, I'm going to change the thread because my other pieces, as you can see, my feathers are going to be in gold. So I'm going to put gold metallic in. So I'm going to change my, change my thread. So I have to kind of go back when I'm going, you know, from the center out, you kind of have to change threads occasionally. And I kind of go back and forth. Had a little trouble this afternoon winding a bobbin. You know, it all went under the bobbin. You know how that goes. Sometimes it happens. I don't think it's going to thread my gold either. These were the two colors for some reason. My machine does not like to thread. It's always the ones that I need to use a lot. Because some of it, it just perfectly threads it. I don't know. It's weird. Oh, I'm sorry. I made it mad. Nope, not going to throw that one either. That's the only thing that I've ever had problems with Kingstar. It it will thread some of the time. If you have a number 14 needle in your machine, it probably will. I happen to have... Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I really like it. This was fabric I got up at Helios and Mount Vernon. And I got enough to make three quilts. Okay, so now... See, we're kind of doing this middle row here, right here. So I think let's go, let's go um, to the left. Let's go this way. Because I want to do, there's two different kinds of blocks that we need to do. So 
If you have a four patch flock, you're going to put the the wreath, the the feather wreath in the four patch blocks. Okay. If you have a six patch block, you're going to use a feather wreath and a feather. In this case, and and if you look at your little um, road map, it'll tell you how they go. So the top half of the quilt, the feathers are on the bottom and the feather wreaths are on the top and then vice versa on the bottom. So where I am right now is the row above the center row here. So I'm going to go this direction and I'm going to put a feather here and a feather wreath up here. So we're going to do those two and I can show you my little trick with the feather wreath. Let's do the feather first. Okay. So of course we have a template for that as well. And this one's going to be rectangle, right? And I have my snowman. I stuck a snowman on this one because I have to use this quite a few times. So I just left the snowman on this one. And I'm going to pull that off the backing. I had to re reprint a couple of these because I was they had gotten worn out because I've done several quilts. So. so then I've got this line, you know, with my block down here. And I want the little point, the tail to the left. If you look at the pictures, that's the way I put them. You don't have to put them that way, but that's the way I put them. And I've got my arrow pointing up right here. That's the top. And I'm going to use that center line to help me get this placed on those bottom two squares. Just lay it in there. Like that. Okay. So there's my template. Then I'm going to, again, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and bring this up with, I'm going to bring my feather up. And I think it's in a different folder. It's in the one called Interior Block and Border Quilting under PES. And I'm going to use my feather. Now, the feather is going to come up, just so you know, up, up and down. <laughs> so we need to rotate it to the left for it to go in the quilt. So I'm going to go ahead and edit rotate 90 degrees to the left because i want the tail to the left okay and i don't know why it did that it, it was like this on my screen but when i saved it it was up and down it's probably something to do with the hoop okay and then i'm going to hit embroidery and then i'm going to do the same thing here that i did with the last block i'm going to do i've got my template i'm going to kind of bring this up so that my needle is approximately over the center of the design i'm going to take my the top of my hoop and i'm just going to slide it in there now this one's the bigger hoops you can actually like flip them up on the machine but this one's not big enough <laughs> on my machine it might be on the dream machines and then i'm going to have to take some more i'm going to, have to take some more pins out here because you don't want those pins underneath they do really make everything slide so and then sometimes I go back and put the pins back in again later. So I think I'm going to have to take this one out for sure. Maybe another one. Let's see. Yep. I have to take a couple out up here yet. One here I need to take out. All right. Now I'm not perfectly centered, but it's pretty close. And make sure that, you know, the, the, the quilt is flat in there. Get it as straight as you can. And if it's not straight, remember, our, our snowman's going to help us get it straight. But I could just as easily have quilted this whole quilt with a traditional hoop. I just happen to have these tools. So it is faster this way, I will say, because you don't have to take it in and out of the machine. You know, I can just leave it. You saw I never took it out of the machine. I can just slide the quilt around. Okay. Kind of Kind of got this rolled up over here. All right, so I'm pretty close. I'm going to go ahead and hit my layout button and then find my little snowman guy. Here he is. Click that, click OK, and scan at the bottom, and then OK. Just going to find the little snowman. Let's see if I can let you see what's going on. This, this arm doesn't move as easily, so, so you can see where the little snowman is. All right, there he is. Found him. 
getting them all lined up. All right. I'm going to click OK. It says remove the positioning mark. Cool. I'm going to click OK. I'm going to go back over here. Take off my template and try to find the paper again. Still got my gold. I put my gold thread in there. And then I'm going to quilt the feather. Now I noticed I've got kind of a long tail here because I, I had to hand thread this. So I'm going to clip that off a little bit. Otherwise, it leaves a big long tail. I'm going to hold this up. And we're going to we're going to quilt this little feather. Just watch pins if you pin based. Uh, I pin basted my quilt. Um, if you don't know how to do this the sandwiching business with the with the quilt and the uh, backing and everything, um, I used um, um, Kathy. I don't like that method because um, it is not quilted through the back of the quilt. I want my quilt quilted quilted through the quilt. It looks traditional this way, and it doesn't look like it's been inverted. So nobody probably would ever realize this was done in the inverted. Um, I quilted, or I sandwiched this on my my uh, table, my cutting table. Um, I have the top, of course, on the top. I have Hobbs 80-20 batting, and I have my fabric for the back. And you need about a yard and a half of backing, and it's 45 um, inches wide, so I didn't have to cut it. I, it was all It's all one piece of backing, okay? And um, if you have, do not know how to sandwich a uh, and, and pin base to quilt if you've never done it before, um, Amelie Scott Designs has a great video called um, How to Sandwich a Large Quilt on a Small Space. And it's up on her blog or website, and you, I know you'll be able to find it. But a Maylee Scott designs, and, and it's a really great video. Now I'd never, I'd never sandwiched one before, and that's how I learned to do it. So it's a pretty simple process. I use pins. I use these safety pins when I pin base, and we've talked about this on several other classes before. So some of you have done some some pin basting now. Um, I don't like uh, adhesive spray. You can use it if you want. It's not real great for the machine. It gets all over everything. So, all right. So there's our there's our feather. So there's the straight feather. Now I want to do the feather wreath above that because this was a six, six patch block. So I'm going to show you my little trick for the for the uh, four patches and for the tops of the six patches. When you go to do the, um, I made you a template for the wreath. But as you can see, there is actually a four patch, right? So that there's a center point right here where the four blocks meet. So what I just do, just to save time, I just take my snowman and I just put the snowman right on that center junction of my four blocks and stick that on there. And then I don't have to use the template. So that one, I can do that because there's a mark right in the center of the block, okay? So again, I'm going to kind of get the needle under the center point here. I'm going to slide the hoop back in there. It looks like I need to take some more pins out. I spend a lot of time putting pins in and out when I'm quilting, especially with the magnetic hoops. Okay, so let's see where we're at. Up here, I think I've got a couple more that need to come out in my little gingerbread man here. So I spend a lot of time taking pins out. All right. Let's see. That one's pretty crooked. So let's see if I can straighten it up just a little bit. I don't worry too much if I get them in here crooked because it doesn't really matter. But I like to try to get it at least somewhat straight <laughs> and with these hoops and I did a video on these a while back with these hoops you want to make sure you put your your um your uh, rulers on here because then um you can tell if you're straight or not because you can use the numbers on the rulers at the top and the bottom and like the blocks can really help you so how do you know where to place the pins 
Um, what I do, Cindy, is I like to pin about every approximately three inches. Okay. So that made this quilt really easy because these are three inch blocks. So I put one pin in each block and I put a couple pins in, in the um, breadwork blocks. Okay. And then about every three inches, like down the borders. So you should pin about, you know, about a fist apart or so. That's about three inches on my on me. My hands aren't that big, so. All right, so I'm kind of off, but, you know, it's going to be okay. Let's see. Make sure I don't have any pins under there. I don't think so. It's all lined up. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and get my wreath and it's in the same folder that the feather was this feather was in interior block and border quilting under pes and it's called the feather wreath there's also a corner block but it's much smaller okay so you need the feather wreath for these bigger ones in the center and embroidery and now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to hit layout or edit, depending on the machine you have. And then find the little snowman. Scan. Okay. And it's going to find the snowman and center my design for me. May have to move my camera back a little bit. Sorry, guys. Quilt wants to get it. It's finding it. It's up on my screen now, so it knows where it's at. And so, like I said, I didn't use the template for these. You can if you want to. I just put, I just use the snowman in the center. It was a little faster than getting the template out each time. So, whatever works for you. So I'm doing my feathers in gold. And it says remove the embroidery positioning mark. Okay. I'm going to take that off. Just going to grab that out of the center there. And you can use those snowman over and over again, too. All right, so I'm going to hold my quilt up. Let me see if I can get the arm of this up just a little bit. The quilt needs to ride under here a little bit better. Okay. All right, so now we're going to do the feather wreath. And this is going to do that four patch area. Now, like I said, on this table, I do not have to worry about my um, back because my back is laying flat on the back. Um, if you do not have a table like this, you know, put a little table up behind your, your cabinet or your table so that you're, you're, um, you don't have to hold it in the back. It's very hard to hold all this. The other thing that works really, really well that I'm really considering getting is one of those weightless quilters um, that Dime has and it's got the poles on it and it, it kind of goes around your cabinet and you you just kind of uh, clip the corners of the quilt up on it it is awesome and then it just kind of sways along with your machine so um, I, I think I'm going to get one of those because I want it for my um, PR because they they show using it for the multi needle and I like to quilt with that too and there's not much there to um, hold the quilt. You know, there's not much there to, to, to rust it on. So I thought that would really work well. It's kind of going around doing all the little feathers. I love feathers, so I just had to digitize feathers for this. Now, you saw Judy's um, blue quilt. Her, her quilting is a little more subtle. Um, the gold sticks out a little bit more. She did hers in silver because it was blue. Um, hers is a little more subtle. You don't see it quite as much. It's going to keep going around. But as you're quilting then, you're just going to be looking at your little, your little roadmap here, and it's going to tell you where to put the quilting, you know, where to put your, your um, feather wreaths and where to put your feathers, and you just put the corresponding stippling design around the red work designs. So I, I tried to make it really simple. And I actually digitized the stippling in the embroidery machine. You know how I've shown you several times how I, I like to use Design Center to make the stippling. 
And I really like the way Design Center stipples better than the software. So I actually did it in the machine, saved it back to my computer, and then made it into a PES file. So it is actually digitized in the machine. Uh-oh, I'm about to have help. No, I don't need you right now. You need to go down. Get down. Or sit down right there. There you go. She doesn't bother. She doesn't come out to see me all day until I'm teaching. She's been sleeping on the bed in the back bedroom today. No, nope. get down. Stay there. Just need to hold your quilt up so it doesn't drag. And I'm just going to continue around the quilt and just kind of work your way, you know, from the center and kind of work your way up and out. And that's how the, the quilt stays the, the, the nicest looking and also the least, um, you know, won't get wrinkly and, and get weird looking and all that. So you just need to kind of work from the inside out. I'm working way out on the outside edge right now, so I'm having to hold this up a little bit. There's quite a bit of hoop of the quilt in the machine. But this has been really fun. I I enjoy quilting this way. Um, I don't like to do really big quilts like this. This this one's not very big, so it really doesn't take that long to do. Okay, now it's going to go around the, the feather, and then it goes back. I don't know why. It's just the way the, the design ended up. <laughs> and goes and picks up the last feathers at the end there. All right, I'm going to do the last feathers. And this one's in the books. All right, so there's another feather and feather wreath. Okay, now when I the next one I would do, I'm gonna go like like go down to the end of the the same row we were working on. You know, we've been working on this kind of middle row here. Pull it down there so you can see. I would then go on, and I would work on probably go down here and then like next to the stocking, there's another area here that I would do another feather. Oh yeah, I'll show it again. Yep, I will. Yeah, this this so this would be another one that I would put the feather wreath in. Okay. And then as you can see, then I'm gonna kind of probably kind of head up again and start working along the top, this top row up here. Okay. And I haven't done any of the bottom yet. So then you know, then y'all kind of start in the center towards the bottom. And I'm gonna start like in this area. Like here's the Marion Bright block. Okay, and then I'd start kind of here and I'd just kind of work this way and this way. Okay. Until I've got all the interior done. So then let me let's talk a little bit about the borders. I I wanted to show you the borders tonight, but I just didn't get any enough of this done that I really feel comfortable doing the borders. You really need to do the interior before you do the borders. Um, that way everything is flat when you get to do your borders. Okay. So the borders, um, you can do them lots of different ways. Um, Judy took a decorative stitch and just ran it right straight down this narrow border on hers. I did a, um, I'll bring this over here. This is mine. This, I did um, a serpentine stitch down mine. I did two, one on down each side. And I thought that looked kind of neat. You know, maybe I'll do a decorative stitch this time and I still use my gold, okay? But primarily what I want to talk a little bit about is these borders. Okay, when you go to do the borders, the border, and this is the thing that's a little confusing. Get this out of the way here. The next um, picture on page, I think it's eight, has a picture of the borders. Okay, so here's the borders, and you're going to put that kind of triangular um, feather on the borders and how I did it is I took the template straight up from the block on the top and the bottom you can go just straight up 
and you lay the template in between and that's how you get it lined up. The, the bottom of the template goes along your seam allowance right here against the inside border, okay? But I like to use a five by seven hoop to do that, um, to do this, uh, the border piece, because it can go this way. So with that being said, you need to think about how you got to put your snowman on. Okay, or how you're going to hoop this. So like if I'm going to hoop this in a five by seven hoop, I'll bring this down so you can see. Okay. This one, this is where the last block on the top here. Okay. I would take this border off. Let me just take a pin out so you can see me stick it on here. If I can get this off, let's see. And this, I did, I did this, you know, in great detail on, in the regular videos and the videos that come with the designs. So it's a little bit more clear, I think, in there. What you're going to do is you're going to take that template and I'm going to lay it along the top of my inner border. So the bottom edge is going to line up with that. Okay. So you'll have a little bit at the top here. Pull this down a bit. Okay. Like that. All right. But remember, I'm going to put this in a five by seven frame. You could put it this way, but the there's not a ton of fabric and stuff up here, and the smaller hoops work better. So I'm going to have to turn this this way to sew all of these. So they're all going to be sewn this way. So instead of this being the top, which it actually is, what's going to be the top? The top of the hoop is going to be this way. Okay, so when I go to put my snowman on, this is the top of the quilt, but I'm going to be hooping it in my 5 by 7 hoop if I can find it. I like my 5 by 7 magnetic hoop. So I'm going to be hooping it this way in the machine. Okay, so then the snowman needs to go this way on my template. So he's going to go with the head this way because that's the top of my hoop so does that make sense to everybody even though this is the top of the quilt i'm gonna i'm gonna hoop it like this and then you don't need so much fabric on the edges because there wasn't a ton of fabric on the sides especially so by using a smaller hoop it made it easier to hoop these okay and get them and get them tight so I, I like the five by seven hoop for this one. So like what, so that's the, the top and bottom border, you have a row to go by. So you, you just slide the template straight up from each row. On the sides, remember there's a half drop block. So let me turn it on the side here. On the side, there's a half drop block here. Okay, so we do need to have one here. So we're going to use, you know, we're going to put the template, line it up with the bottom of this, this border and put it in like that. And then when we go to do the next one, we need to start in the middle of this block and run down to the first row of the, um, this four patch. So you're going to have like a half drop block and you just line them up and go down that way. So I'm going to line it up with this and then it'll go from the middle of this white block to the center of this. Okay. So let me go get my other quilt that it's done. So there's going to be six designs down on the sides and there's five at the top. But you do have to remember to put your snowman on because see the snowman's still going to be this way. You can see him over here. So here's the snowman. You, you, this is still the top. So this is the way it's going to be hooped like this in the hoop, okay? So you do have to put your snowman on differently than you, what you think, okay? And move your design in the hoop. So like if I move my design, um, actually it comes up this way. I think it comes up that way. So let's check it, Pat. Um, if I go into the border, I think it comes up this way. Uh, interior block and border, and then PES, and then here's the border. So see, it comes up that direction in the hoop. So see how it already comes up 
with the um, point to the left or to the right. And then that means that this is up. <laughs> this is up. Okay. So that's why I, I have my snowman on like this. All right. Does that make sense? So it actually comes up that way in the machine. Okay. So let me go grab my other quilt that's done. So you can look at the blocks on the borders. Okay. So here's the the finished one. So here's the border block, see? And I put the template between these two, this row right here. Let me pull this back just a little bit. Put the template right here and I just moved it right up here and used the snowman and there's, there was my first one. And then I did the, ne the next row. So here's the next row, straight up like this. So I tried to make it really easy. And here's the middle row, straight up. Okay, then when you do the sides, remember we have that half drop block. So the, so the one side has a block on the corner. So this one, this is the other side. So then it's straight. But then this one, you're going to go, here's a four patch. Okay, straight up. And then this third one then is going to go to the middle of like my snowman block here. And the middle of this this is the bottom, like the six patch. So straight up. And then you're going to do the same thing. And it's in the picture, so you should be able to say, so here's the middle of the four patch. Go straight up. So you'll have six on the sides and five across the top and the bottom. Okay? And then in the corner, you're going to do the same thing with your little template. I don't know if I where my templates are for my corner. But the corner block, what you're going to do to put your template in, you want to line up the bottom and the left. So the inside corner here, you want the, the corner of your template to line up along these inside corners, these inside sides, okay, on all four sides. Over here, going to be on these two sides. And then when you go down to the bottom, and I talk about this in the other video too, so along here. That's where you're going to be going to be lining it up because remember there's a seam allowance out here we need to have. Okay. So I give you all the quilting. Once you're done quilting, the whole thing's quilted. Now the one thing I would tell you is after you're done quilting, give it a nice press with the iron and it just like flattens everything out and makes it look really nice. Um, I noticed that like on mine, I have a little bit of a poo a poof in the center of my wreaths, but you know, that's okay. I thought about putting something in there, but I just thought it might be just too much, make it a little stiff. So I just take my iron and give it a little press and it just lays it nice and flat then in the center. Okay. And then your center, like your edges here will lay flatter. Just give it a nice little press when you're done quilting. And then you're going to put on your binding. Now I do machine binding. Um, I also gave you a binding video with the with the, the set. And so I use two and a quarter inch binding. I sew it on the back. I flip it to the front and I use a little teeny zigzag stitch and, and sew it down. I like matchy matchy thread. This happens to be monofilament. Now I I found a new matchy matchy thread that works better with this fabric. So uh, the monofilament shows a little bit more than I like. But that's all I had when I did the first quilt. <laughs> this is my my prototype quilt. So, because I had to test all the in, all the embroidery pieces. Okay, so that's kind of a quick quilting video. Um, like I said, I did two videos. Um, they were both of them quite long for the quilting of the quilt with the design pack. So you have um, some very detailed quilting videos with it. Um, one for the interior, one for the border. Okay. So then um, can I see the back of the quilt? Sure. So the trick with backs of quilts, I did trim some of my little, what I do is I go back and I trim some of the little um, tails. There'll be some little tails because this is a, this is an embroidered quilt and, and that's fine. It doesn't bother me. What I do, there's two two op, two things you can do. 
try using matchy matchy kind of matchy thread for your backing and if you don't want to do that use a busy backing so see i have a busy backing and i think it looks very pretty yes there's a few little tails i just kind of nip them off a little bit and um i don't notice them at all especially if i use um you know kind of busy backing now this this uh quilt here is not busy in the back so i am going to have to trim a little bit this one's not super busy but it does have kind of a gold fleck in it so i thought it would be more matchy see so see my gold kind of just kind of matches right in with this one so this one's going to be really pretty too i think um this is not the way i would quilt a quilt to enter it in a competition so if you're going to enter a quilt in like a competition at the fair this is not the way i would quilt a quilt you know i would take it to a long armor to have it quilted but um if you're quilting yourself and i quilt so many quilts this works beautifully and i do kind of you know i'm careful about what i use in the back i like my and i do clip my little clips there's some little tails and i tried to have as few tails as possible on the quilting so that they basically start and stop in the same place so you have like one tail for each design so you can clip them and they'll be fine just don't clip the knot just clip the tails off and then they won't show okay but yeah i'm i'm gonna this one's gonna be really pretty i like the backing on this one okay and then this one's busy now my other one that i did um was busy also it had uh some kimberbell fabric on the back actually this one had snowman and the other one i think was the kimberbell black with all the little um, i think it was we whisk your merry christmas fabric so it's pretty busy too. So, you know, you don't really see the tails on it at all, but I thought it was pretty. Okay. So um, you can still get the designs. If some of you haven't gotten the designs, you can still get them on my website. Um, so dash along dash with dash Jan dot square dot site. And that's where the designs are. And um, you can download, you can, uh, um, pay for them and I'll, I'll send them to you. Um, are there any questions? Is this making sense to everybody? Quilting is so much fun on the embroidery machine. And I like this method because it looks like a real quilt. You know, it's quilted through the backing um, and, and, and it's a traditional look. I don't like the quilts that are not quilted through the back because they're pretty on the front, but then they have that big piece of plain fabric on the back and it wrink gets wrinkly. So if you have to if wash it they wrinkle you know like they don't they don't hold up really great to be washed if it's gonna be a wall quilt i'm okay with it but i want my quilt to be able to be washed so i could throw these in the washer and not have any problems and they would look really pretty actually i like to wash my quilts because then they look antique they look a little bit wrinkly i like that look because then they look old <laughs> and they look antique so i've always liked that so okay the second here let's let me switch my camera and I can say goodbye. Oh, and somebody wanted to see the blue quilt yet. Let me go get the blue quilt again. Let me switch the camera back up. I think it was Kathy wanted to see the blue quilt. Just a second here. I gotta find the right. There we go. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Get this camera out of the way. All right, so let's go get the, the blue quilt. I wish you could, I'll, I'll take a picture of it. I'll take a picture of it at the store when I, on Tuesday and put it up because it is a little hard to see it. Here we go. So here's Judy's blue quilt. I just thought it was really, really pretty. And her back is busy, you know, so you can hardly even see the quilting on hers. It's very, um, her back is flowery, so. But isn't that pretty? I like the blue and none of her fabric is, is Christmas. It's, it's all just florals. And I think she had kind of a, well, this is kind of a grunge kind of looking fabric on the, on the corners and the, and the border. It was kind of a plain, but there was one plain, but most of it was pretty much a um, flower, you know, floral. And she used just a plain white cone, I think for the box. Isn't that pretty? I really liked it. Yeah, and the color, all the different colors are so much fun. Like, like, um, 
Lynn's is, Lynn, did you put a picture of yours up on So Along With Jan? I think Lynn's here. Um, can you give your website address again? Yes. Um, it is so dash along dash with dash Jan dot square dot site, S I T E. And the, the uh, link to it is on the group. So if you, you can find it on the group too. So yeah, so anyway, um, Lynn, if you haven't put your picture up on the group, can you put it up on the group of your quilt with the red and the gray and the black? It's really pretty. All right, so there's the blue quilt. I will take a picture of it. Um, I'll put it up on the wall at the store and take a picture of it. It'll be a little easier to see it better then, so. Okay, and next week we will be doing, oh, the cute little, um, where is it? Where is? We're going to do the little snowman. We're going to do so much fun. So we're going to do this in the machine. This is done in Design Center, IQ Designer. And those for those of you who don't have it, I have on the group just the PES file so you can just sew it out. But we're going to make that next week. I thought that'd be fun. Day after or the weekend after Thanksgiving. And then we're going to start. We're going to do the two little Christmas pillows the next two weeks and then we're going to have a little break okay i'll remind you about the break though so we'll have a couple classes during that time but okay so thanks for joining me i hope you enjoy the quilt and and if and the quilt is fun i i enjoy designing quilts and this was a very different quilt for me because everything else i've done is completely done in the embroidery machine this was a little bit more traditional so i think it was fun to learn to to how to teach piecing. I mean, I've never really done that before. And I love the snowman feature. The snowman feature is awesome. So when you have a snowman, you have, and the projector, I mean, it's like, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> you can fix anything. So, all righty. So I'll be seeing you next week. If you have any questions, let me know. And I'll be seeing you next week. And everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. So dad and I are going to have uh, chicken and rice and pumpkin pie. I love pumpkin pie. So, so we're going to have a nice day and I hope you guys all have a nice day too. Talk to you later. Bye. Good night, everybody. Have a hard time picking out fabrics. Well, you know, I just picked out six fabrics for the blocks and white. And then I, use the two borders as part of the blocks. I just kind of picked out six Christmas fabrics that I liked. I didn't really have a way to, I just picked out six that I liked and they all look kind of nice together and I just used those. <laughs> Thanks everybody. Good night.